Um, yeah, my name is Sarul. Um, I'm from Mongolia and I work for Mongolian Green Party. My position is uh, uh, head of the um, Green Woman Network and I also engaged in APGF Women Network and I work as a co-convener for the APGF and the, uh, representing the APGF Women Network. Um, today I'd like to introduce my presentation on women's rights, uh, human rights. Um, this is the very a general big theme, of course, but I'd like just to share my idea and uh, opinion on how to understand the uh, human rights in relation to especially women's rights and what can be an international source is that everyone would be interested in it. And of course, we are a Green Party woman. I'd like also to go into a, a little bit short uh, uh, about the United Nations Environmental Program. And that's all in general what I want to share with you. Um, so I'd like to put my, I'd like to share my PowerPoint presentation. The, this is the presentation about human rights, uh, human rights. And then I would like just to introduce the main uh, conventions relating to human rights, especially um, women's rights. And in the slide, you see the general um, conventions, the basic human rights conventions. So as you see, Universal Declaration of Human Rights and the other two conventions below all together is called Bill of Human Rights. So like all um, possible human rights are included in general in these three uh, conventions and declaration also. Um, uh, because I, I mentioned it because it is about in general about humans rights. But what I am mm, talking now is about women's rights, which you can see on the screen in yellow, Convention on the uh, Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women. In short, we call it CETA, which was adopted in 1979 and accepted by 187 countries of the world. It's almost the all country of United Nations members were um, adopted this convention. The other two conventions, uh, Convention on the Rights of the Child, Convention on the Rights of Person with Disabilities, described here because altogether there's three, um, Women's Convention, uh, Person with Disabilities Convention, and Children's Convention are all regarded as um, vulnerable uh, groups uh, conventions. And um, my opinion is that uh, women are included in this vulnerable group. Vulnerable group is, uh, I'm sorry, vulnerable group is not uh, uh, correct um, because um, Mongolian, uh, because a woman all around the world actually is the half of the whole population in the world and should not be regarded as vulnerable groups because of its all uh, possibilities uh, for uh, being equal in development and social, economical, and political rights. But as you see, the children or people with disabilities, of course, has some uh, limits and um, impossible ways to introduce their rights and to protect their rights in a full uh, political, economical, cultural, and even in social rights. So this is just my um, uh, opinion that I want to share you that uh, why a uh, woman, uh, we should be regarded as a uh, vulnerable group. Um, we need to eliminate 
this kind of um, thoughts and attitude. Um, unfortunately, we all that the, this equal equality between men and women are still problem in all around the world, even in uh, developed countries. And uh, um, the next one is about this uh, CETA convention, which I like to call it as like a bill of women's rights because it is included actually all possible rights that women should in, uh, enjoy and it's uh, uh, all kind of rights, social, cultural, economical, and even political rights. So that's very inclusive and very comprehensive and very smart uh, convention in my view. Um, so, um, yeah, and uh, CEDA, um, in general, introduced all these rights in three principles. Um, principles of state obligation, principle of substantive equality, principle of non-discrimination. And um, to share um, my opinion, and also it might be helpful to understand the convention for um, our Green Party uh, women, uh, I put here uh, some, uh, some words uh, below the principles like state publication, you see who, substantive equality, how, and non-discrimination, what. Um, the convention obligated state to introduce, to implement, and to develop all these convention ideas, uh, regulations in, its, uh, uh, in the state's uh, um, institutional, uh, legal, and uh, all kinds of uh, implementing um, uh, ways. So uh, state obligate, uh, principle of state obligation tells us who is uh, obligated to do what? What is non-discrimination principle? Um, what is uh, discrimination? Why uh, women are discriminated in certain ways are described by these principles. So I put the word why under non-discrimination principle. And the next one is the most important and very um, principle for uh, special for women who is uh, who are engaged in political um, ways and who want to introduce this uh, convention in a uh, way to introduce policy in regard of their parties and we as a gr green woman party um, uh, women of green parties uh, have also our gender equality policy and toolkit. So um, we might uh, compare the convention principle to our um, gender equality toolkit would be very interesting and we might get more um, some helpful ideas, regulations from this uh, convention. Um, so I'd like to introduce you a short video introducing um, the three principles, especially the principle of um, principle of here substantive equality and after the after the uh, video we would like. Uh, uh, go into a little bit uh, more about the substantive equality. CEDA. The Convention on the Elimination of All Forms of Discrimination Against Women is an international human rights treaty that focuses on women's rights and women's issues worldwide. It follows the following three principles, substantive equality, non-discrimination, and state obligation. This video explains the principle of substantive equality. 
There are many contributing reasons to inequality. Some people are born with much more access and opportunities as compared to others. Gender stereotypes enforce the difference between men and women. It labels women as weak and in need of protection. But in reality, both men and women share the same traits, except for reproductive capabilities. Women and men are different, but ultimately, we are equal. Inequality between men and women is also reinforced by the patriarchy system that sees men as leaders. Some people argue that men should have greater rights to economic resources because they have the responsibility of providing for their family. However, this belief does not match reality. Today, women are unmarried, divorced, widowed, or otherwise separated or abandoned by circumstances and are the sole providers. In Southeast Asia, many households are headed by women. It is estimated that 70% of the world's poor are women. Equality for women can be viewed in three approaches. Formal, protectionist, and corrective. In the formal approach, society ignores that men and women are actually different. It follows the male standards, disregarding women's special needs. For example, a factory allows men and women to take night shifts. But if the factory is not well lit, it can lead to assaults. This may discourage women from doing night shifts. In the protectionist approach, women lose opportunities because they are perceived as vulnerable and prohibited from participating in certain activities. In the same example, the factory has a policy of not employing women on night shifts to protect them from being assaulted. This does not address the problem and denies women extra income. In the corrective approach, priority is given to correct the environment in order to benefit both men and women equally. The factory could install more lights and provide transport for women in order to create a safe and enabling environment for them to work night shifts. Corrective approach leads to substantive equality. It recognizes differences but affirms equality between men and women. It places an obligation to correct the environment that disadvantages them. It evens out the playing field and it requires laws and policies to take gender perspective into account. Substantive equality ensures that women have equality in opportunities, equality in accessing those opportunities, and equality in getting results or benefits. This video covers substantive equality, one of three CEDAW principles. Um, so the video uh, introduced just one principle of the three principles and then you can find the, on the internet and YouTube the other two videos on other uh, two principles. Um, it's uh, very interesting uh, videos. Um, so as you see in the substantive equality video, uh, the approaches are introduced uh, in three ways how to uh, how to satisfy the substantive substantive equality in a very um, comprehensive way so there are three approaches formal protectionist and corrective and the corrective uh, approach is the best way to introduce substantive equality because as you see the um, formal approach is um, a very um, direct way and um, in a negative way uh, tries to eliminate discrimination but it does not help very much because it it, it does not satisfy the uh, wise way of equality between a woman um, and the protectionist uh, um, approach is an approach tries to uh, correct the uh, how can I say wrong approach of formal one but it is still not satisfying to um, enjoy the woman the whole rights of equality in many ways 
So the next, the last correct approach tells us how to enhance the equality possibilities in the most um, comprehensive and wise way. That's, that's why it's called substantive. And this substantive approach um, uh, supports the equality at most and very effective way. So um, we should um, try to introduce the policy and um, develop regulations relating to gender equality and women's rights, trying to um, use the corrective uh, approach. Um, yeah, and this next uh, describes how to, how, um, I'm sorry, how the uh, corrective approach is uh, introduced like a, a corrective approach it recognizes the pre differences but affirms equality places obligation to correct environment etc um, so like a, um, an example of corrective approach is you can see in many countries the woman's election quarter um, allows the woman to participate in election um, at least 20 or 30 percent of all the candidates etc and in labor law you will see some regulations in some countries that allows a paternity leave not only maternity leave um, this is an example in our life and um, yeah so, in the next, in the next uh, slide, I'd like uh, uh, to introduce some saying by Ms. Famzile Mlambo-Nguka, who is UN Undersecretary General and Executive Director of United Nations Women. Um, her uh, it is uh, taken from he, her interview and uh, some uh, some of her um, answers is very related to the uh, substantive equality and um, the good approaches uh, related to the gender equality. And to my examples uh, that I want to share about Mongolia, um, the first uh, sentence here, you can see gender inequality directly leads to the majority of the world's poor population being women. We even have a saying that poverty has the face of women. This is the case in China and in other parts of the world. The sentence sounds to me very interesting because China is our the closest neighbor, but the culture and the tradition is there um, different in many ways. This is an example. Um, like we don't have any uh, proverb or saying about women uh, that the, the poverty and women related. Uh, but here in China, you see um, this uh, uh, proverb that tells, uh, I want to say that um, gender equality is uh, a problem or um, gender equality is a question to be solved in uh, all around the world. But in many ways, it should be uh, regarded in a different way, introducing policy and maybe regulations and uh, related laws. So because it is deeply introduced, deeply connected to the culture and institutional um, or legal approach, regulations are should regard it to the cultural um, cultural concepts 
so this um, the saying uh, uh, and the next slide introduces the exceptional maybe for many people interesting statistical information about Mongolia um, unfortunately I don't have English uh, version but here I want to cite just one number like um, one oh wait, one fifth of all Mongolian women are uh, high educated in comparison to uh, men who are just 15% of all men of Mongolia are educated in uh, high educational institutions. So uh, in many other countries it's unusual, uh, but here in Mongolia it's not a very unusual thing. Um, if we think there's a high educational level of Mongolian women, we might say like, um, the gender equality issues or woman poverty is not very much a big problem here in Mongolia society, but it does not tell actually gender equality is uh, not a problem in Mongolia. In about the poverty or about the um, domestic violence or um, yeah, or in health issues of women, etc. So, what I want to say is that uh, to uh, find out the reason of unequal rights of women and men in every other country is different, and uh, but uh, what we are aiming to. Uh, is the same. This is for the most possible way of uh, equality between a man and woman. Um, as a Green Woman Network leader of Mongolian Green Party, I, I always think how to introduce the gender equality in the most effective way in Mongolian society. Um, so like based on interesting st statistics and the reality and the uh, political and scientific uh, approaches <laughs> I, uh, I might uh, like I, I am dreaming to introduce a um, policy like she for she and she for he this is a um, a version of an international movement, he for she actually, but I'd like to use it in Mongolian case for this to um, uh, words she for she and she for he. It's this 20% um, introduces uh, that like Mongolian women are uh, um, just 20% at um, decision making level in Mongolian politics, and 80 per, uh, other 80% are introduced by men, which tells a little bit controversy that uh, Mongolian women are higher educated than a man. So, this is the reason why we should a uh, woman support woman. Um, more than 50% of Mongolian population are woman but at decision making level it is not uh, the case uh, so so the problem is that woman should not uh, woman uh, don't support woman at uh, decision making level at the election etc so and um, because of the men's education is lower than uh, men in the society, the problem raises actually um, many uh, ways uh, in, especially the biggest problem in Mongolia is uh, domestic violence. So 
to reduce this uh, problem and um, we need to help uh, as a woman for men to educate them more in a uh, human rights and in a uh, women's rights and also in gender equality uh, education. So I would like to say like she for he is like women should be very initiative to uh, educate men. And the next slide uh, also actually related to uh, Green Party Women's uh, environmental governance is uh, should be an issue that will we'll, uh, always concern. Um, the environmental governance is introduced in United Nations uh, environmental program uh, very close and very descriptive so um, if we see in the web page of this uh, organization by the United Nations, you will get a lot of information, um, projects and uh, regional and regional level, including Asia Pacific, what we can do, what other uh, green and eco women are doing and what can we at uh, what issues we can cooperate. Yeah, um, so we know all why gender is a matter to, uh, why gender issues are matter to environment. So I don't like to go deeply in this uh, issue. And here I, want to share just one example uh, from this uh, website uh, informations gender equality and the environment it's a guide it's a toolkit it's um, everything actually if you go into it on this paper um, why a woman should be initiative in environmental issues um, at the end of my um, presentation, I want just to share this uh, information uh, because of this uh, coronavirus, a very exceptional situation all over the world. And as a political woman, especially a Green Party woman, uh, we should um, concern about the women's situation and environmental situation and business uh, situations uh, during the COVID-19 uh, COVID and how, it in, how is the impact uh, to the woman and to the environment. And uh, this is the call for submissions introduced by Human Rights uh, 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 Special Rapporteur and we can cope, uh, cooperate on this uh, submission on this uh, call actually as asia pacific woman and uh, sending all this information related and that would be uh, of course very much helpful um, to introduce a further uh, policy by the united nations environmental program so that's all thank you very much and yeah, my presentation is uh, probably structured and uh, very this other way, but uh, this is how I want to share about this uh, green policy, woman uh, rights, gender equality, and current situations that we would, uh, uh, we would concern. All together. Thank you very much.